evening and welcome. I am Amarachi Ubani. Tonight, vigilant worshippers prevent a suicide bomb attack on a mosque in Gashua village of Yobe state. But it's another terrifying day in Beningwari in Kaduna state where gunmen strike again. River State's Governor Nyeson Wike raises alarm over an alleged plot to assassinate him. The Vice President, Professor Yami Oshibajo, prescribes creativity, innovation and hard work as catalysts for nation building. And the US and China enter agreements which puts their trade war on hold. We begin tonight with the courage and vigilance shown by worshippers to foil what would have been a devastating suicide bomb attack on a mosque in Gashua village of Gujba local government area in Yobe state. A female Boko Haram suicide bomber had earlier today infiltrated the mosque just before the commencement of prayers, but was detected while attempting to detonate her suicide vest. She was quickly restrained, arrested and handed over to army troops at Azari. According to a statement from the spokesman of the Operation Lafia, Dole Theatre Command, Colonel Onyema Wachuku, members of the Explosive Ordnance Disposal Team have safely defused the suicide vest. The would-be suicide bomber is currently receiving medical attention due to injuries she sustained in the scuffle during her arrest. Suicide bombers have recently been targeting public places, including mosques and internally displaced persons camps in communities around the northeast. It is a different story in Beningwari local government area of Kaduna State where one person has been feared killed and nine others kidnapped after gunmen attacked another community in the area. Although the state police command is yet to confirm the incident, a resident of the community told our correspondent that the gunmen invaded Maganda village located along the Funtua Beningwari road and abducted three women in the early hours of today. Six other persons were reportedly kidnapped along the burning Gwari Kaduna Highway on Saturday night after the bandits attacked the commercial vehicle they were traveling in. One of the passengers reportedly died in the resultant accident after the driver lost control and the vehicle crashed into the bush. The attack is happening a week after the chief of army staff, Lieutenant General Tukur Buratai, ordered soldiers stationed in the burning Gwari Axis to flush out armed bandits that have been terrorizing the area. Staying with security issues, the repeated killings in Berningwari and other parts of Kaduna State will only end when there is effective cooperation between the federal and state governments. Former Kaduna State Governor Senator Ahmed Mukafi gave this position while speaking on our special political program, Roadmap 2019. He told Channel Television's Ladi Akeridulale that what is urgently needed as a surgical operation. When people have confidence in you, they help you keep the peace. If you run a government in a way that people lose confidence in you, hardly will you get the cooperation of the citizens in ensuring that peace and stability, you know, exist in your state. Now, yes, there are continuing killings in uh, so part, uh, part, part of southern part of uh, Kaduna State related to the Hartsman farmers conflict, which is not limited to Kaduna, to uh, the Middle Belt, and it's been spread into the southern part of this country. You know, this is going on. So, uh, it's a collective responsibility. The center and the state must work together, but it's more a responsibility of the center, really, because they control 100% the security and um, quasi security apparatus, you know, to prevent and if unfortunately it occurs to apprehend and to prosecute, you know, the offenders. The equally the Birnungwari area, you see, is a forest linking Birnungwari, Kazuna, Kebi, uh, Zamfara and Kwara State. So it's a border area. It's a border area and bandits Rustlers, battle rustlers, kidnappers have made that their den. What baffles me when the authorities 
as the center and state know of this fully, why should it take so long to cordon off that area and do a surgical operation to permanently dislodge and deal with this band of criminals? For the full interview with Senator Mark Kaffi, do watch Roadmap 2019 tomorrow, May 21st at 9pm, only on Channels Television. Elsewhere, the River State Governor Yeston Wike is raising an alarm over alleged plans to assassinate him in a crowded environment. The Governor alleges that according to security reports available to him, the said killing is to be blamed on an accidental discharge. Governor Wike was speaking during a Thanksgiving service in Port Harcourt, the River State capital, to mark his administration's third anniversary. According to him, this is not the first time some alleged political enemies have made similar plans against him. Some of the guests at the event included the former First Lady, Mrs. Patience Jonathan. Just this morning, we got the intelligence report that they are going to assassinate themselves in a crowd, and then they will say that they are going to accidentally discharge. I laughed. I said, the same God that I'm protected of the now, that same God has not abandoned us. Whether they want to assassinate themselves or not, as a child of God, nobody can intimidate me. Don't give me you have sleepless nights. Nobody can intimidate me. Because what is in me is greater than them. Away from security, the Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, says creativity, innovation and hard work are vital instruments to move the nation forward. Professor Shibadro made the remark during a special Sunday service to the Commonwealth of Zion Assembly Church in Abuja. He says the church at large must continue to emphasize the virtues of hard work and diligence, particularly at a time when young Nigerians need guidance in understanding the meaning of true success. Sometimes when you hear what is being preached in churches, it's almost as if, well, life itself is to be lived by miracles. And that you really don't need to put in any work. You don't need to do much. The reality is that true success is line by line, precept by precept, building block upon building block, hard work, innovation, character, that's the, that's the measure of true success. And somebody has to teach that because that is what the church has always been known for. It is the church that transformed nations everywhere, everywhere. That creativity that God commanded us to, to, to do, that creativity that he commanded us to perform in every way is what will change our nation, our creativity, our innovation, our hard work. And it was a command. So if we obey God, if we're creative, if we're innovative, if we're hardworking, our nation will change if we obey God. But it's possible, you know, that when you look at countries all over the world, there are many countries with resources, huge resources, like ours, and many countries that have no resources whatsoever. But it's creativity, it's the added value that makes a difference. Vice President Professor Yemi Oshibajo. Meanwhile, the chaplain of Astor Villa, Pastor Joseph Malomo, is asking Nigerians to pray for the peace of Nigeria as a nation amidst clashes between herdsmen and farmers that have claimed several innocent lives. Speaking in Abuja while presenting a legacy Bible containing five languages to the governor of Bielsa State, Pastor Malomo explains that the nation and her leadership need prayers to overcome the current security challenges. The governor of Bielsa State, Mr. Suryaki Dixon, who applauded the gesture of the chaplain, said political leaders need the support and prayers of the people to lead the nation in the right direction.
as Christians, as a religious leaders, to pray for them, that God will guide them. And you know, God has a way of touching. The Bible says that the art of kings is in the hand of God. And we believe that God has a way of guiding them, and they should all depend on God. And I know they are depending on God, and God will guide them. Taking the Bible back to Bielsa, and I've asked him to continue to pray. I will also call upon all the clergymen, both in Bielsa and all over the country, to continue to pray for our nation, Continue to pray for the president and the vice president and all others in federal authority. Continue to play, pray for the governors like me and all of us in leadership. That uh, the, and the, the Bible will be a source of uh, encouragement and support. And it will continue to be uh, a tower under which we will all take refuge. And now to politics. Reactions have continued to trail the just-concluded state congresses of the All Progressives Congress held across the country. In some states, party members rejected the outcome of the exercise, while in those states where it ended without controversy, loyalists promised to retain power come 2019. The state congresses of the All Progressives Congress may have come and gone, but pockets of controversy still trail the exercise here and there. Results have been released in some states, but some members disagree with the outcome. In Cross River State, irrespective of the peaceful conduct of the exercise, some of the party members have rejected the result, describing it as a sham. This is a party that came with a slogan of change. This is a party that has now consistently abused the trust they put a place in them. And I think it's high time they stopped all of this. Though the former governor of Bayonsa State, Timmy Pierre Silva, claims there is no division in the party within the state, the national headquarters declared Jonathan Amos as the new party chairman. But the other faction held a parallel congress with Joseph Farfi emerging as the chairman. A peaceful and successful congress was conducted in Ebony State, with Eze Wachiku Eze elected as the chairman of the party in the state. It's also a parallel congress in Enugu State, where the faction loyal to Senator Ken Namani held its exercise, returning Ben Moye as its state chairman. The main congress was disrupted halfway the previous day. Earlier, members loyal to the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Jeffrey Oyama, held their exercise amidst violence. It is a long day, but peaceful and orderly for the delegates from the 44 local government areas of Kanu State. Abdullah Abbas, former Commissioner for Special Duties, emerged winner and was sworn in alongside 35 other executive members. Governor Abdullahi Ganduje believes it was a transparent exercise. We shall continue registering new entrants into our party. We shall continue to publicize the activities of the state government. I therefore wish my, to, confirm, to affirm my commitments to the development of the party welfare of the members as well as cooperation and support to the present administration under the stewardship of Dr. Abdullah Umar Ganduji. The plan of the APC members in Niger State to affirm existing leadership structures was greeted with stiff opposition as aggrieved members protest alleged imposition of officials. We don't want them to impose somebody on us. Let us select the person, let us vote the person we want. When you have, when you have thousands of people, it's sometimes you have a few minorities that might not be happy, but all this will be dissolved. It's not unusual. It's also a divided house in Benue State. The Congress was held at the Upper Aku Stadium in Makodi with a new chairman elected. But some aggrieved party members insist the exercise was fraudulent. He told me to come and pick up the form on the ground, on the con convention ground by 10 a.m. And he forgot that the same guideline said we should submit same form 24 hours before the Congress. So tell me. The two aspirants are not from Ogadibu. The guideline is very clear. I have the guideline here. The, the state congress, you must come from that local government where it is zoned to. The APC Congress, which ended in consensus and affirmation in Kogi State, saw Abdullah Bello as the new chairman. Do you all agree with Abdullah Bello? Yeah. For the APC in Adamawa State, both parallel congresses held peacefully in Yola, the state capital, and officials were elected.
The APC Congress is over with diverse impressions. The coming days, weeks and even months will tell how formidable the party intends to be in states where it prepares to retain or take power come 2019. In part two after the break, a new PDP bloc in the ruling All Progressives Congress does an about turn, denies issuing an ultimatum to the party's leadership and the presidency. Please stand with us.